Hey guys, Mike Chen here in Montego Bay in Jamaica. It's about 5.30 in the morning and my food day is gonna start in just a little bit. Gonna head to the mountains to try some traditional Jamaican breakfast cooked over an open wood fire and then to a pig roast on a farm that not a lot of people know about. Finally, many people say that KFC in Jamaica is the best KFC in the world, hands down, no comparison. And there's always such a long line. So I wanna go try that out too. And before getting the food day started, I just wanna give a big thank you and shout out to the sponsor of this video, AG1. I've been starting out the day with AG1 for the last couple years. And before AG1, I used to truck around with at least half a dozen bottles of vitamins. And now every single day, scoop or travel pack of AG1, eight to 12 ounces of cold water, shake it up in my travel bottle, and drink. And that's it. Because AG1, it's a science-driven formulation of 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced nutrients. It aids your brain, it aids your gut, which I really need, and basically your overall immune system. And like I mentioned, there's probiotics, there's prebiotics, and plant-based enzymes that help support digestion and overall gut health. Plus, I, I don't really love eating fruit, so getting vitamin C for me was a big problem. A scoop of AG1 gives me my daily dose of vitamin C, zinc, functional mushrooms, and more to help support my overall immune system. Since I've been taking AG1, I feel better, I have more energy in the morning. I recommend it to my parents, I got them some. They now take it every single day. So if you wanna give it a try, go to my link down below. And my special offer will include 10 free travel packs and a free one year supply of immune supporting D3K2 with your order. And the travel packs are a great way to keep up with your healthy habits while on the go. And speaking of on the go, let's go check out some breakfast. Hey guys, Mike Chang here outside of Montego Bay. My friend Des and I, you're showing me a local traditional Jamaican breakfast. Yes, and we're showing you the preparation process, what they do in order to get the food ready, the food prep, the authentic style. And I see it's just burning wood. It's no propane, nothing like that. Right. About a dozen pots are being boiled with water. And this is the way that people usually uh, prepared food before they had the propane tanks. Mm -hmm. And this type of food, boiled food, is a popular thing in the morning time that people would consume because it really fills you up. Great for people who do farming, yeah. maybe construction work these days. From those times, it was still something that people would like to consume in the morning because it's heavy, it holds yeah. you. It smells That's really good. Though. Right. Very and good. Jamaican breakfast is almost like lunch yeah. or dinner. It depends on where, what time of day you want to eat. Fulfilling. Right, it's very full. All right. right, that's the my type of breakfast. All right. All right, let's eat. The water has boiled. The chef is adding dish by dish into these ginormous pots, and they are looking delicious. I just saw chicken curry go in, some turkey neck, stewed pork. This is gonna be my first time having breadfruit, and they just lay it right on top of the wood fire between the pots. So breakfast is almost done cooking and they are switching right away to cooking lunch. Basically, breakfast gets cooked, everybody eats it, it sells out, a matter of a couple hours, and, and then it's lunchtime. I've been watching them cook for over an hour. Finally, everything is ready. Got my two plates of food. Pretty much a little bit of everything on the menu. To say I am so much anticipating this and feeling so excited and hungry, 
will just be the most ultimate understatement. So I got pretty much a little bit of everything in this box. I got some cow foot, some stewed pork, stewed chicken. Oh my gosh, the fish. Deep fried first toe is perfectly crispy on the outside. Then it's stewed in some sort of brown gravy. There's steamed vegetables here called pak choy. There's curry chicken. And on the other plate, there is the roasted breadfruit. That's what I wanted to try the most. There's pumpkin, green bananas, boiled dumpling, there's sweet potatoes, there's yam. It's also a fried dumpling. Let's start with the cow foot. This is super, super tender and gelatinous -y looking. And look at this thing just jiggle around. Mm. That's so good. Beans, vegetables, and I love these little parts with the marrow inside. Look at that, it's gonna be some scrumptious beef butter. Mm. Oh, that's just the best part. Just being able to watch this cooking process is so interesting because most of the food is stewed with so much seasoning. The degree of sophistication when it comes to putting all the flavors together, incorporating so many different spices and vegetables, making it taste the way it does. It's a pure art. Of course, nobody using measure cups or anything like that. Everyone just knows this. Everyone's pretty much, well, cooking from the heart. I love the use of peppers here in Jamaica. It's pretty much goes in everything. So you taste that beautiful heat and that smokiness too. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that that cow foot is bomb. Chase it with some breadfruit. Tastes like a steamed bun, like a mix between a steamed bun and maybe a taro. This definitely is something you should dunk into the brown gravy. Let it soak up all that delicious flavor. Wow. Oh, this cow foot is so gelatinousy and all that flavor. It's just infused into every single piece of meat. Mm. Every single dish has its own unique flavors and spices. All the vegetables are fresh. There's tons of herbs that goes into it. Like I said, I see a lot of thyme. Well, not just thyme, but you know, thyme goes into the dishes as well. Curry chicken. Mm, I love the curry chicken. The curry is fragrant. It leaves a gentle stinging heat on the tip of your tongue. There's juicy, again, I'm just going back between the two boxes. Take some of my breadfruit or sweet potatoes, dumpling, dunking it into the gravy. Because you do not want to waste a single drop of that gravy fish. Mm. Oh, that's good. Superb texture. You can see the color of the fish reflecting all that delicious brown gravy. Chase it with some of my yellow yam. Mmm. That actually goes so good with this gravy. It's like this whole box here. The food is starchy, so it's a perfect complement to all this flavor and sauce. First time biting into a Jamaican dumpling. <laughs> wow, this is a dense dumpling. This thing will definitely do a lot to fill you up in the morning. And just dunk that into your gravy. Mm. Again, the amount of flavor that's in every single bite just sends a little tremor all the way from taste buds down your spine. My stew pork is my favorite so far. There's such a good amount of fat that goes along with the lean pork. Spicy, it's smoky. You're getting that hint of smoke with pretty much every single food item. That's the result of the wood fire. It's not just simple food stewed together with just some very essential ingredients. I mean, really so much ingredients, flavors, so many different types of spices and seasoning is used to cook every item and they all taste unique uniquely different and delicious. My fried dumpling, dunk that into the gravy. Wow. Fried version. It's much more absorbent. It's more airy. So you get way more gravy soaked up in this. Oh, that's so awesome. Also, I never had this before, uh, but this is Jamaican ketchup. So people put this on pretty much everything. So I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit, taste this, take some pork, dip it into that. Mm. The ketchup is, uh, it tastes fruitier. I think a little more sweet than the US ketchup. Definitely more tart. Mm. It's almost like a, a marriage between a sweet and sour sauce and a ketchup. That goes really well with the meat. They brought over some hot sauce, so. The recommendation is hot sauce with the ketchup. Wait, I gotta balance this out here. Now I have too much ketchup, now I have too much hot sauce. Then dunk your meat in. That's the way to do it. A little more heat with the meat, plus that nice sweet tartness. Mm. 
Also another thing I love about Jamaican breakfast, again, like I don't like the typical eggs and bacon in, in, in a pancake. I love a hearty breakfast. I love my breakfast with a ton of meat and carbs and saucy and spicy and everything in between. This is all that and more. So to me, this country definitely does breakfast right. This is Bianca. She's the owner of this establishment. Love the food. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Everything is beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Another thing I love about Jamaica, there's fruit trees everywhere. So oh, yeah. this is a guava tree right here. And Bianca's getting me a guava. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't believe you got that. Mmm. Fresh guava off a tree. Mmm. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And you have a coconut farm too. Yeah. Coconut from Bianca's farm. Mmm. Well, that's refreshing. Totally forgot there's a soup as well. This soup is cooked with chicken neck and chicken foot. So there's a chicken foot. It's a pumpkin soup. That's so freaking good. Definitely taste that pumpkin. Added to the most ridiculously delicious bowl of chicken soup. It's rich. It's borderline creamy. And there's dumplings and yams and carrots in here as well. Mm, very delicious, very fulfilling meal. But after this, we got a roast pig coming. This next location is located deep in the mountains. Oh my gosh, I see it spinning. A giant roast pig over hot charcoal. Oh. My gosh, that is a thing of beauty. You can hear the skin sizzling, the oil dripping on the charcoal. So while the pig is roasting, this is a cherry tree. You found some good cherries, Dad? Yep. A really nice one right here. This one. Can we just pick one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, thank you. Good? Mmm, whoa, that's a really juicy cherry. Well, it's very tart too. So this place is called Father Chris Inns and that's Chris right over there cooking up the whole pig. You only do this once a week, right? Yeah, only on Saturday. Only on Saturday? Yeah. And then until you guys sell out? Yeah. So you have the pig and you have chicken over there. Yeah, man, yeah, some chicken over here. Wow. How long does the pig take to cook? Four, three hours. Huh? Three hours? Yeah, man, three hours. We stuff it all in ingredients, all in natural herbs and spice and peppers, and, and then we sew it back together. Wow. We can, we can get jelly if want, Freshly man. picked star fruit. Oh, here. Fresh off a tree. Oh my gosh. You can normally just cut it in two. Mm -hmm. Like this. Just cut it up. We washed it off already. We eat everything. The skin. This one is nice and juicy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mmm. Mm. Not a juice. Wow. Yeah, never had a starfish like that before. Pig is almost done. Before that, soup is ready. But I just had the chicken pumpkin soup. This is the beef one with some yams, some carrots. Oh, these soups, whether it's beef or chicken, one common denominator, just 100% pure flavor. The beef one, slightly gelatinousy, just like the chicken soup. You taste the pumpkin. The texture is between rich and smooth with big old chunks of beef and yam inside. And you definitely taste a lot of peppers. Oh. Every chunk of beef is so tender. Mm. Amazing little appetizer before the pig. Pig is ready to be taken out. Oh my gosh, this is the best part. This is the stomach where it was sewn together so all that seasoning and herbs can stay inside. Oh my gosh, there's the pig belly too. So this thing is just pure fat and flavor. Chris, that was just yeah, great pork. The spices, the 
the whatever you put inside that pig that's one of the most flavorful roast pig i've ever had i mean my mouth is on fire spices in there yeah. peppers that was such a gelatinous bite too that was just all the best part of the pig Things is dripping with juice. From the taste of Jamaican seasoning I've had so far, I know this is gonna be pretty darn good. Beautiful, golden, crispy skin. Look how thin this thing is. Oh yeah, you know this is gonna be crunchy. Right underneath the crispy skin, pieces of ribs. And this is the best meat right between the ribs. Again, look at this. The meat is just falling off the bones. Completely clean. I didn't even need to clean this off. It just fell off. Gravity, that's all it took. You can see the seasoning inside the meat. The peppers, the herbs. Try the skin first. Oh my God. That's one of the best bite of crispy roast pig skin I've ever taken in my life. And I've taken a lot. This is so, so fantastic. It's like a crunchy porky chip with a thin layer of gelatinous fat. But beyond all that, it's the flavor, the seasoning, the chilies, the peppers, and steeped into the skin itself. So usually when you bite a roast pig skin, you don't taste a lot of the seasoning. This is not the case here. Here you taste it all. Oh. I don't know what kind of herbs Chris put in here, but my tongue is getting a little numb. I feel like there's some peppercorn in here even. Chase that, some Jamaican seasoned rice. Mm. This is the greatest thing. This rice is also the greatest thing. All the beautiful flavors from the pork is also in the rice itself. So young, so fragrant. Try one of these ribs. Mm. First of all, the meat is just <laughs> melting your mouth. Mm. It's juicy. This is absolute porky perfection. I love meats with a lot of flavor. The pig quality is really good as well. The meat tastes very clean, no gaminess whatsoever. Jamaican spices, I mean, the way they're able to utilize the different herbs and spices and come up with a blend of flavor that's just not just spicy, not just fragrant, not just a little nummy, but this is like a recipe for happiness right here. Perfect compared with the seasoned rice. When I was getting this, rice was being added. I was thinking, ah, I don't really need any rice. I'm good with just a pig. No, the rice is so good and so needed and pairs perfectly with this pig. Another piece of skin. Just listen to that crunch. Beyond the food, just the people as well. That's why I noticed about this country. People are incredibly nice. What I noticed about cooking in Jamaica, all the ingredients are so fresh. They're not modified at all. These are what the foods are supposed to taste like. And what I love the most, the most, scotch bonnet peppers are usually always involved. And that just makes everything better. Mm. Yeah, those chicken are so good. Mmm. We chase it with some of this avocado. It's creamy, but also at the same time, a little refreshing too. You gotta come here if you are ever in Jamaica. Now we're walking to a nearby pineapple field with Noel. And teens right here. Oh, here's the pineapples. Look at this. That's some sugar cane right there. This farm has everything. You can see this pineapple. All pineapples. Yeah. That's a giant pineapple farm. Yeah. Noel just got all this without a machete. I don't even know how you did this. Yeah, Guinness bottle. Guinness bottle. Yeah. Oh. And I drink it out. You drink it out and then you use it too. Mushy. And then, you know. Use it as a machete. Yeah, man. That's good use of uh, whatever resources you have available. You're good, man. Everything blessed, you know. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, my friend. 
Oh my gosh. That yeah. tells me to drink a coconut, you just you just shoot Coconut. it up. Yeah. <sighs> Refreshing. It's awesome. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Final meal today. We're in downtown Montego Bay at KFC. The best tasting KFC in the world is here in Jamaica because Jamaica KFC uses local chicken, utilized a lot of local Jamaican spices. But the only problem is it's really popular. I mean, look at this drive through. It just wraps around the corner, incites even more people. So we're actually going to go do the drive through because it's actually quicker. And now I'll just eat it back at home. Finally got my KFC. Waited in line for about an hour. If we were inside, that line would have been much longer than that. This KFC really didn't have much. The only thing they, they had was the chicken. I tried to ask for dessert. That was sold out, the sides were gone. This might not look the prettiest. I got a three piece, and what you can do is get a three piece combo, came with fries, and they have three different types of chicken at KFC here in Jamaica. They have the original recipe, the spicy, and barbecue chicken. Yeah, it's better. I think that one's actually the spicy chicken. It's really like, good. The flavor of the chicken is so, it's better. There's definitely a lot of different spices in here. The spice kicks in maybe three seconds after you start chewing this piece. It's just a far more delicious piece of chicken than at your typical KFC. The heat is really, really, really nice in this chicken. I think the heat, if I'm correct, is coming from local bonnet peppers. Mm. This is an amazing piece of fried chicken. This next piece, I think this is the original recipe. There's definitely a lot of spices on this chicken. I know the kernel has 11 herbs and spices. This looks like it has more. Yeah, this is the original recipe. And if the Jamaican KFC met the US KFC in an alley, the US KFC be giving up his lunch money. All of it for the next 10 years. It's so much better than the US KFC by a ginormous mile. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Has so many different spices. Definitely way more than the Colonel's original 11. You can taste a little heat. There's a bit of numbness here, like a slight hint of mala. And overall, it's just way more flavorful. chicken is so juicy. The skin has a delightful crunch. The spices you're looking at, they make such a huge difference on this chicken. This is night and day compared to US KFC. And I've been to a lot of KFCs around the world. I never really noticed a difference in flavor in terms of the original recipe until now. I mean, it's a significant difference. This is an OMG wow. And you know what? That ketchup's better too. This is the barbecue chicken. Mm. Ridiculous. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I don't think I've ever had barbecue chicken at KFC, so I really don't know what to compare this to, but just overall flavor. The sauce has a hint of sweetness, it's smoky. It's not overly sweet. It has more of a umami flair to it. The flavor is so deep and rich. This is the first time in my life I didn't want a KFC meal to ever end. Oh, I got one more sandwich. I got a Zinger sandwich with a hot chicken inside. Cheese, tomatoes, lettuce, and a sesame bun. It's a good sandwich, but the first time in my fried chicken eating life, the hot chicken wasn't the best chicken. I mean, this is good. Hot chicken is delicious. The original recipe chicken is mind blowing. That barbecue chicken as well. I think those might be tied with the original recipe having a slight edge. Now I 100% understand why when Jamaicans go back to the US, they bring their relatives and friends, Jamaican KFC. This is definitely worth a one hour wait in line. I mean, it is masterful. I've never said this about KFC. I never said this about the Colonel, but good Lord, Jamaica KFC, best KFC on this planet, 100%. I've had pretty much KFC there every single country I've been to. Nothing compares in pure flavor to this. Anyway, today was such an amazing, fun food day. I love Jamaica, I love its people. I say this so many times, everyone I met is just incredible. 
incredibly friendly. Big shout out to Chris again for the amazing pig and the roast chicken and showing me around his farm. Bianca's breakfast place was nothing I've ever seen before. Just being able to witness the cooking process and finally being able to taste the food was such a delightful experience. And of course, big shout out to my friend Das who took me around to all these places. If you guys are coming to Jamaica, you want a great guide, I'll put Daz's information down below for you. He is gonna show you some really great places. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.